Hey there, welcome back. It's an online Bible reading club, Justin speaking. We're on a very significant uh, edition of the online Bible reading club. We're on day 106, which is the end of 1 Samuel, so 30 through 31 chapters, and the end of Luke chapter 13, beginning in verse 22, falling to the end of the chapter. So we're going to be finishing up yet another book in the Bible, so it's great. But I tell you, this book is kind of like uh, 1 Samuel it is. Uh, well, before we start out, Go ahead and look at the description below for today's reading. You'll see that uh, the, these videos are typically used to preview the text you're reading for the day or to review those you've already read so you can get a little more insight into it. So either to give you a heads up on what's ahead or to review. With that said, let's get into it. If you look at the um, end of the book here, it's kind of like Empire Strikes Back. Kind of a lot of, Not a lot of hope here. Uh, very disappointing ending. Uh, it's one thing after another. A couple things. Uh, you've got chapter 30. David actually uh, comes home from a great victory, and he and his men, he has 600 men with him, realize that uh, the Amalekites have taken their wives and children hostage and plundered their city because they're away with the Philistines and got sent home. Well, that is devastating. I mean, the men are devastated, and so they set out to go and find their wives, and they find a, a servant who's been abandoned uh, by uh, the bad guys. And this guy gives them intelligence that leads them to reclaiming all their wives and children again. And David, in chapter 30, finally puts right a wrong that Saul, Saul again is the first king of Israel, uh, his reign began in chapter 11, so 20 chapters ago, uh, and one of the first things he did was to rescue a group that we're going to see in chapter 31. However, in the 16th, 15th chapter actually, uh, the very beginning of it we mentioned last time, that Saul did not... Uh, put the ban or utterly annihilate, clearly destroy the Amal Amalek, uh, the Amalekites, because he showed them mercy. But there's a long history here where Moses uh, was was, uh, and the Israelites were battling them because they had harassed and tried to take over God's people, the anointed people, as they're coming out of Egypt and into their own freedom through the the, the wilderness journey and Exodus. So. What's going on here is Saul didn't do the job. David is thrust into doing that job by uh, really tough providence. I mean, it, his men were about to mutiny, but David uh, consults the Lord, strengthens himself, and the Lord uh, and the priest there uses the ephod to get the word of the Lord and tell him, go and pursue them. So David does pursue them. It does mention after he catches them and destroys them, that 400 or so men get away, uh, but uh, utterly decimated them. A uh, the few few remnants or survivors got away, uh, and uh, that's the that's the end of them. Okay, so finally those things have been righted. The, the things that that led Saul to uh, to be abandoned by God and to no, have no longer communication with him uh, at all. And we saw last time led him to consult a medium. Well, that's what's going on with David. That David and Saul have been uh, separated. Uh, as Saul has pursued him throughout the rest of 1 Samuel, uh, Saul continues his downward spiral. And if you look at 31, you see the sad ending of Saul. So Dave, we leave behind David. Saul is pursued up the mountain to Mount Gilbeo, uh, Gil Gilboa. I'm sorry, Gilboa. Uh, up the mountain, uh, all of his people are dead, and he and his sons there, three sons. Uh, are finally killed. One of them is Jonathan. And you think about this, Jonathan uh, dies defending his father. Uh, but you see back in 18, chapter 18, he renounced his, heir, his right to be the heir of the king to his friend, David, who he was loyal to. But he's also loyal to his father, who is the anointed king of Israel at the time. Uh, now David has chosen to replace him, but uh, Jonathan never... never um, wavered in his faithfulness to his friend David, made a covenant with him. However, here he dies on Mount Gilboa, uh, fighting and defending his father from the Philistines. We see that Saul is going to see his son 
slaughtered, and son slaughtered, plural, and then take his own life uh, there uh, in the chapter 31. So David, uh, I'm not sorry, Saul uh, takes his own life, but Jonathan, I want to highlight here, Jonathan dies defending a kingdom he can't keep to enter a kingdom he can't lose because he's one of God's people. And that's that's a huge point. And San, um, Ralph Davis made had that line. I, I lifted that right out of his commentary on 1 Samuel because it's so poignant. It's exactly what Jesus says in the Gospels when he speaks of, of what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul. As you look at this, the ending of this uh Book, it's really sad. Uh, Saul dies uh, at his own sword, uh, falling on his own sword. And then the, the Philistines mock Yahweh our God, Jesus, ultimately our Savior, by taking the king's head and, 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 and putting it on a pike and, and, and mutilating the bodies of the, of the royal family of God's people. And, and so a couple of uh, folks over across the Jordan River on the east side of the Jordan whom Saul has rescued prior uh, uh, hear about what's happened and these butchers, the Philistines, have taken uh, uh, down Saul and his family and have been mutilating their bodies and triumphing over them and uh, mocking the God. Well, what they do is they they go and, and on a, about a 20 mile uh, round trip journey in chapter 31 at the end of the, uh, the, end of the, of the chapter and rescue uh, the corpses, and then they burn them, take them back home to where they are across the Jordan River. Uh, and remember, Israel is on the west side of the river. They go back east side of the river, and they burn the bodies and bury the bones there in their town. Now, they show honor to the dead king who has been desecrated, and it's it's uh, it's it's. Homage. One thing we know about that that land from the scriptures is that uh, they uh, worshipped uh, the fertility god there. You see, archaeology finds uh, demonstrate that too. They're worshiping false gods. Their hope is in a deliverer, this Saul who delivered them, who is not a true deliverer. He's a failed uh, del- deliverer, a failed redeemer, uh, a failed king, and and that's that points us again to Christ. Uh, you can look to all kind of things, all measures of things, to be your savior, uh, to to have control, to have power, to have influence, to have you think it all lined up, but nothing can stop your inevitable demise. So the question before us is, why should we fight for a kingdom? Uh, why or why should we why should we cling to a kingdom we can't keep? We die fighting, you know but we must enter into a kingdom we can never lose, and we can only do that through faith in Jesus alone. We can't storm the walls of this kingdom. We are helpless. We will all have to face the true king who's coming to right all the wrongs, and he will not allow the mockery to continue because, look, exactly what the Philistines did to Saul's body, the Jews and the Romans did to Jesus' body. Since... Jews and Gentiles gathered to mock the true king, the true and better Saul or David, Jesus Christ at the cross. They lifted him up on the cross. But it was through that mockery and desecration and and Jesus descending to hell, as it were, to take on our cross and our wrath that God redeemed the world and gave them that kingdom they could never lose. Jonathan was wrapped up in Jesus there. He died fighting at Mount Gilboa, but he truly, through his union with Christ, went with Jesus, and we get what Jesus got in his resurrection. We are resurrected new creatures through faith in God and his promises, and that's beautiful. Now, you must believe in him. That's what the really the heart of the, the New Testament passage is today, and if you go to Luke 13 and you look at it, uh, what's going on in Luke 13 uh, is that Someone Jesus looks at uh, Jesus went through the towns and villages teaching in, in, in verse 22, and someone asked him, "Lord, are only a few people going to be saved?" And Jesus has absolutely not, absolutely not, not a few people going to be saved. 
tons of people. It says, eventually you get down to it at the end of the text here, and he says, uh, da, 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 da. yes, uh, you'll see in verse 29, people will come from east, west, north, and south and take their place at the feast in the kingdom of God. But the what made Jesus sad, and how he show you show his it shows his sorrow there. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets, stone those who sent you. Verse thirty four. How I long to gather you. Now. It says your house is going to be desolate, and the, the many who are again in verse thirty, who are last will be first, and the first will be last. These people were familiar with Jesus. They knew him. They, he walked amongst them, and they had the scriptures and the covenants. But they did not accept Jesus. They rejected him. You can't just be near. You can't be a, a good uh, a worker of good deeds. Uh, you cannot accomplish entrance into this kingdom. You have to enter. Enter. It says in verse thirty or twenty-four through the narrow door. Luke thirteen twenty-four because you are not going to be able to get in except through Jesus Christ. He must be your Lord. You must renounce all of your sin, all your false worship, and cling to Jesus. He is the only way into this kingdom that can never be lost. We will lose all of our kingdoms fighting for them, which is great. God's called us these things. We're going to lose it all. But we cannot lose the kingdom that Jesus wins if our faith is in Christ. So that's good news for all those who are in Him. And I hope this has blessed you and given you a lot to think about today as you look at the end of Luke 13 and the end of 1 Samuel. We'll be on 2 Samuel next time. God bless. Like it, subscribe, comment, do whatever you got to do. Help that uh, algorithm work up for, in our favor. Peace. We'll see you next time.